Kia ora. Welcome back to another episode of the video podcast series Influences at LU, brought to you by Lincoln University's Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce. Uh, with me, your host, Hafsa Ahmed. This week, uh, I have got a very special guest with me, uh, and today our topic is going to focus on the UNIS Social Business Center here at Lincoln University. And my guest is Professor Christopher Gann. Who Hello, is- good afternoon who is recognized internationally for research leadership in banking, microfinance, stock markets, and Asian financial economics. Chris works actively to collaborate with academics internationally uh, from other universities, particularly from Asia, and he inspires the next generation of young scholars. In 2017, he instigated and led the Lincoln University UNIS Social Business Center, The objectives of the UNIS Social Business Center are to build awareness of social business, undertake training and education, provide mentoring and support research on social business. Um, It's the first UNIS Social Business Center in New Zealand. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Chris. Welcome. Thank you, Habsta. Right. So my first question to you, Chris, is uh, what is the UNIS Social Business Center at Lincoln University? Well, as you have given an overview of the UNIS Center, it was established by Nobel laureate Professor Mohammad Yunus, uh, who was on campus on April 2017, and together with the UNIS Center uh, delegates, they signed an MOU between Lincoln and UNIS Center to open up the first social business center in New Zealand. And from there, we have a discussion about how should we go forward uh, having this unit center. And it gave a springboard of, if you remember in September, 2017, Professor Mohammed Yunus and his delegate hosted the first uh, social world forum social business conference in, in Christchurch, which attracted a lot of uh, delegates from around the whole country. So basically, the objective is to build awareness of social business, undertake training, education, mentoring, support on social business. And it, parallel to what Mohammed Yunus is very famous for, for the microfinance, which is our offspring from Grammy Bank. And basically, the idea of microfinance has a parallel, similarly objective of social business is to provide social capital, is to provide financing to small business entrepreneur and to household. And the objective is no more than, it's a social objective, not a profit objective. And basically is to eliminate poverty. Mm. So that is a very uh, wise objective of a business. So Chris, it would be great if you can talk to us a, a little bit more about social business or social enterprises. Well, so we sometimes we use the word interchangeably, social enterprises, social entrepreneurship in today's society, such as a human form of entrepreneurship, focusing on the benefit of society that may reap. Simply put it, it becomes a social enterprise when it transforms social capital that affect the society positively. Uh, you get viewed as an advantage because the success of the social entrepreneurship depends on many factors that are related to the social impact that traditional corporate business firms do not prioritize at all. We understand that the basic objective of the corporate business is to profit making. Mm. Well, social business, social enterprises as a social objective, we should look at the more than profit, look at the society, look at the environment. And that is important. It looks at intermediate social problem, but also understand the broader context, cross-discipline fields and theory. They may also look at how an issue related to, to allow to society allow the social entrepreneur to develop innovative solutions, mobilize valuable resources that affect greater society compared to a corporate firm is only the shareholders. Mm-hmm. So social entrepreneurship venture focus on gains in social satisfaction rather than profit gains or, ma- or we call it profit maximizing. On the other hand, it doesn't just don't measure, just measure success by profit or revenue forecast or customer reflection. It look at the impact of the society and the environment. 
And of course, profit is important. It's an engine that enables the impact to take place. They are reinvested in either the cost or back to the business to enable the scale. And also a social entrepreneur is a person who, who pursue innovative ideas with, with the potential of solving community problem. Mm -hmm. And also take into account positive return to the society to promote broad social, cultural, environmental goal, often associated with voluntary of the sector. Mm -hmm. So these individuals are willing to take on risk effort to create positive change society through their initiative, right? And the foremost objective of it is not to earn a profit, like I say, but to widespread improvement of society. And an attempt is thrown upon business technique to find solution to social problem. Good example you have on all this are like microfinance institution, need-based community education program, providing banking and ATM service to undeserved area, which is the offspring of Muhammad Yunus' idea about financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. Where Muhammad Yunus say, <coughs> excuse me, giving credit alone will not resolve problem of household and the poor. You have to have them be inclusive. They mean they must be able to access to ATM machine and so on. Helping children often by uh, epidemic disease, which is very important right now and COVID-19. Right. Thank you very much, Chris, because you stressed on so many important points there about social uh, enterprises or social entrepreneurs. The idea that they focus on the on contributing to society positively, impacting the society and the environment, um, and the, the idea that they are not driven by just profits like right. a lot of corporate sector are. So Chris, my next question is, uh, because you mentioned about epidemic, do you think there is an opportunity for social businesses in you know, the ongoing and the post COVID-19 world? Well, in the midst of this current growing COVID-19 globally and here in New Zealand, the, is you, and here in New Zealand, we are unique. Uh, you know, these solution enterprises are needed more than ever now because it's a vital that social enterprises rethink, prioritize to ensure they can continue to develop ongoing positive impact in the post-COVID-19 recovery. And social enterprises are unique and proven capacity to create em employment pathway for most of these advantage, for example, in New Zealand, along with delivering a range of associated community and social benefit. The impact of COVID-19 bikes the broader economy hard and the risk of those being supported by social enterprise is amplified. The impact of the vulnerable person falling out of workforce is much more significant than the impact of someone who faced less barrier to employment and this is where social business play a role. So the impact of the, and what, what most people say, what can social enterprise do then, right? One thing they can work with the customer. There will be obvious challenges during this period as the certainty of contract or purchasing arrangement with customer might be in question as the economic contracts before you re-expand after the recovery period. Some social enterprise may experience increased demand for their product and services. Right? They need to track the website or key customer, have discussion, contact with manager to understand better the impact of COVID-19 on their business. Negotiate what can and cannot be achieved to seek their understanding, forecast customer need in the next three, six strong ones when things should be improved, right? Mm -hmm. As a global supply chain encounter their own challenges, now is a good time for social enterprise to focus on local market. More social enterprise can benefit from shift of consumer to buy local, pro promote local because our border is closed. So we need to revive our economy. So the best now is to stimulate local consumer spending. Okay. So social enterprise should leverage their relationship with local council and business to work together in a cohesive manner to drive the economy, to drive unemployment rate up, no, sorry, right, employment rate up and also to help some of the very disadvantaged small business to recover and come up with a pathway, especially I would say the tourism sector. 
Another thing is that the social business has to be aware of in post COVID-19 is access to finance, finance and business support. The key trust is government support, right? At this point, maintaining job, providing tax relief to small businesses, allow them to recover, along with support packages such as defined period, no interest, unsecured loan, which the government has already put in place, the $100,000 loan. It's a good springboard and it's a good initiative. It's, it's a way for how you use the word we always use in economic finance is like a bridge to cross over, right? There are also other useful non-financial form of existence that will be valuable to all social enterprise, including temporary rent relief, business continuation plan. So there has been discussion by many small business enterprise with the government. Can you give us a tax holiday in our rent? Which called rental is very expensive for small business. And you're going for household too. Those are renting household. Can we have a rent, a temporary? And I, I also understand the city council are also very accommodating, looking at trying not to increase the rates for the next couple of probably one or two years. Because if the rate increase, the people who are severely affected will not be able to, to pay the rate. So I think it, as a whole, the post COVID-19 social business enterprise together with private sector, together with government, together community, need to work together mm. and come in one uni unity form and basically is to how to move our economy forward to a vibrant economy in, a couple, in about two, three years. Mm. Thank you, Chris. I think that was very insightful because I was taking some notes while you were talking and um, I really, um, found that you know how you talked about rethinking and prioritizing what the positive impact is going to be and looking at capacity for creating and re-looking at supply chain and trying to go more local and I, I, I think everybody connects with the uh, with the fact that you ended with in terms of collaboration with uh, across sectors basically you know working with social enterprises private sector public sector and the fact that, uh, and I really like the point that you mentioned that they need to work with local best, local councils to see how they can get the opportunities. And I think it, that brings us to the um, to the last question that I have for you is in terms of the focus for um, a focus. If we focus only on New Zealand, what is your opinion about what's the state of uh, social enterprises in New Zealand? Well. One thing we know, our sector is very diverse, always growing. In fact, when I went to look at some of the information, I found there are 3,500 social enterprises in New Zealand and counting growing. New Zealand is a bit behind like Australia, Korea, Scotland and Canada in taking more intentional approach to growing social enterprise. But having said that, it's been catching up quickly. I've been very, people are now aware, uh, well aware about what we call social business, social enterprise. New Zealand is an entrepreneurial resourceful, largely cohesive society where you can get stuff done very fast. And we also have the benefit of learning from what works in other country, what works in other country. So for example, you take, take Eat My Lunch, which is established in 2015 to help feed the one in four Kiwi children who go hungry every day. The organizer use a buy one, give one model, give a lunch to a child in need for every lunch. So you can set up regular delivery and have your lunch delivered to your workplace and given place. So this is a very good initiative that if I buy a lunch, take it, say I will contribute a free lunch to a children. It's a win-win situation for both people. The business got my business. I also got to contribute to the society and to the, to the social community at large. You have the other one called Wellington Misprint Company wanted to reduce carbon emission and water usage caused by paper industry. They started using repurposed paper to create quickly notebook offering consumer alternative to brand newspaper. The water footprint for making virgin 4A paper in 10, per lit 10 liter per page. So it's safe about 100 30 to about 600 liters of water in every single notebook So, So it's caring for the environment, not just about profit. So taking care to make sure that we learn to recycle, make use of resources. But I would say social enterprise people are very innovative. 
taking into consideration the impact on the community at large. And then you have a one, one very famous one called the Akina Foundation in 2008. I met some of the people, very nice. Evolve is the mission to achieve social and environment impact by growing social enterprise in New Zealand. Increasing the impact of socially responsible organization to innovation again. What's the aim? Is to activate talent, raise awareness, develop new market, investment opportunity for social impact. So Akina provides advisory service, accelerator program, work with in impact investor and New Zealand government to create funding for social enterprise all stages. They have seen growth of the sector firsthand and working more than 1,000 ventures since 2015. So these are some of the very active social business enterprise. I'm sure there are many more out there. St. John Trust is another one that I got engaged with when we started uh, the social business and our uh, center in Lincoln and also the New Zealand Cooperative. Mm -hmm. So there are many more out there and I believe at this, this during this time of COVID-19, these type of small social business enterprise have a much more active and important role to keep the economy going. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Chris. I think that was really um, good to know about the social enterprises section, sector and the fact that, you know, as we start to relook at how we want to do things differently, the fact that there are 3,500 different social enterprises in New Zealand gives you a lot of confidence that there are a lot of businesses who do business for good and have a more intentional approach on how they want to contribute back to the society. And I like that you mentioned that people who are in the social enterprises are more innovative because I think that's what we need with the current scenario. So thanks again, Chris. You're welcome. Thank you very much for sharing with you. I really appreciate your time today sure. and okay. um, you know and those and those insights. If you wish to connect with Chris, uh, his profile is available on Lincoln University's website under staff profile. You can read through his research because he has published extensively in a lot of uh, peer-reviewed journals. And as for me, I will bring you back more expert insights uh, uh, from the faculty where we will talk about the issues uh, coming to us in a post-COVID-19 world. Thank you for joining us. If you want to connect with me, you can message me on LinkedIn, or you can also email me on hafsa.emad at lincoln.ac.nz. Kaki te anō, goodbye, and see you again.